avoid this car company, they're going out of business. Yeah, I get these frequent emails regularly from the JLR group, advertising a lot of promotions. They've got great deals, great incentives. And I've often wondered, is it just a business opportunity? They're just trying to pitch another vehicle because I personally own a Jaguar F-Type R and I thoroughly love that car from top to bottom, left to right and every which way from Sunday. The vehicle is spectacular, it sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It goes amazing. And there's nothing else that you could possibly want for from a beautiful two-door sports coupe. But there is a problem. And the problem is, I'm not sure there's a big future ahead of Jaguar. Now, let's look at some of these incentives firstly, because this might be a little bit of a precursor, or again, the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. It might be this small end of the wedge working its way in. And what we have are some incentives for the Range Rover Sports. Everybody's familiar with that. Unfortunately, they don't get ranked particularly high in terms of reliability, and unfortunately, more conversely, they're probably close to the bottom and we're talking about right here we're talking about the Range Rover I think they're gorgeous and clearly you have to be rich like the king and queen of England but both of them not just one of their salaries both of them to actually be able to afford to run one of these reasonably for a period outside of warranty but that's not what this is about some people love the way they drive and the luxurious appointments and clearly it's made for a king and queen of England because they're probably about the only ones that can afford these vehicles outside of warranty but here's some great incentives up to two thousand dollars off for sport models and we're talking about this is the March Madness, of course, and they'll give you another $2,000 off if you're a customer, a specific, you know, valued customer from before. So you can get as much as $4,000 off a brand new Range Rover Sport. Now, March Madness exclusive, $500 off business office products. You want books, pens, all that other goodness that they'll give you if you are one of their customers and as well up to 30 percent off parts and accessories so they're clearly trying to clear out their parts department they're trying to unload a lot of their goodness and while it does feel like a traditional business opportunity or sort of way to operate and sell their products and paraphernalia there might actually be more going on behind the scenes so i go further into this march madness and and i see other items for example interested in another model for example they have range rovers they have the defenders we also have the Jaguar F-Pace, and, and I've reviewed those in previous channels before where the F-Pace is a great vehicle, has a lot of great opportunities, Ingenium engines, you get the Turbo 4s, you get the V6s, or even better, you get the SVR version, which puts out 550 horse, and it's one of the best SUV bang for bucks on the market today. So if you're looking for one of those great vehicles, that could have been a great opportunity until now. What's changed, you say? Well, let's continue. You know, I've said this before, and I often say that vehicles that are highly incentivized are either A, they're being discontinued, B, they're problematic. And just sadly, unless you have a warranty that's unlimited for life, I wouldn't bother with one of these Range Rovers. They're definitely going to break the bank. Or C, they're just not popular. And so here we go. What we're looking at is a 23 Range Rover, that's their full meal deal, $15,000 off, right? If you're looking to step up for a 24 Range Rover, they're giving you up to $5,000 off. If you're looking for a vehicle, for example, like the Range Rover Sport, again, as mentioned, $2,000, but they'll give you the extra two grand off if you're a loyal customer. And the Range Rover Velar, they're actually knocking off $12,000, which makes me wonder, clearly not one of the more popular models. And then the Range Rover Evoque, they're giving you about $1,000 off. Now, we know that's the price point. Range Rover is smaller, more subcompact, less money. Of course, that's going to be less discount. But they're more popular as well. Then we talk about some of the other vehicles. For example, the Land Rover groups, the Defenders, for example. The Defenders, they're giving you 23 Defenders for $8,000 off. Makes me go, hmm, is there an issue here? And a 24 Defender they'll give you up to $3,500 off. So clearly there are some incentives to buy these cars. Now, a Discovery, I had a neighbor that had one of those a few years ago. They swore they'd never go back and they end up going back to a, a Lexus, in which case shortly after that, then they upgraded to Mercedes-Benz. But a Discovery, they're giving you $12,000 off. And as well, Discovery Sport, up to $5,000 off. So clearly there's big incentives. Is there something going on at the corporate level? Uh, as I mentioned, 
there's some company that potentially is going out of business but let's talk about this further now as a current Jaguar owner I constantly get barraged with emails upon emails about trying to sell me on the new F type R which they're trying to push out the door there's not many of those left sitting around on the car lots <laughs> I also see emails like this. We're now looking at the F-Pace. So the F-Type, of course, being the, the coupe, the sports car, which is one of the best, fastest, cutest cars around. And then the F-Pace, which is their SUV. Now I'm getting lots of emails about the F-Pace. Outstanding ability, impeccable style. Yeah, I would agree. They're pretty fun cars, but they're pushing this product very, very hard. And as well, within this, this correspondence, I'm seeing that they're offering up a lease of 838 bucks per month for 48 months with $6,000 down, 3.99% APR, and they'll give you an additional 1.5% loyalty incentive. So clearly, Jaguar's really pushing hard to sell their vehicles too. Now, they're trying to lease. If they're not selling, they're pushing the leases. They're trying any way to move those vehicles out the door. Now, we've been hearing the writing on the wall for some time. Jaguar actually originally advertised that around 2024-25 that they were going to end production of all their internal combustion engines and they're going to transition to pure electric. Well, we're seeing the I-PACE, which is their electric vehicles, kind of half car, half SUV. We've seen those come out. They never sold very well. And of course, they've been pushing, trying to sell what's left outstanding on the F-Type R's and the F-Paces, for example. Now, I drive an F-Type R and I bought it because I was inspired by the likes of Jeremy Clarkson and Top Gear. And I truly believe it delivers some of the best punch and bang for your buck anywhere at any point. Life's too short to drive boring cars. I even test drove a new Corvette C8. After coming out of that, I was all literally lacking the inspiration. Went back to my Jaguar and I said, you know what, I'm keeping it. I was actually debating potentially selling it, but no. The Jaguar actually delivers that much goods. Now, you'll also probably appreciate, unfortunately, because the reputation that precedes them, their reliability hasn't exactly been up there with Lexus. And so as a result, you know, you've got the British reliability, which of course, it's not really British anymore. We know now Jaguar, the JLR group, Land Rover, Range Rover products are all owned by Tata Motors, which is an Indian company. Now, scoop them up after they were in dire straits. And Ford even owned Jaguar for some time too, many years ago, and turned them into an utter disaster. Some would argue that was the turnaround and made them more reliable. But now, recent Jaguars find are much more reliable than they've ever been. However, they just can't seem to shake the stigma and people are not buying them on the used car market. Hence, the depreciation is hard, abrupt and aggressive and so Jaguars, Land Rovers, Range Rovers are some of the worst vehicles to buy brand new because you can get such an amazing deal on the used car market. As a matter of fact one of the best deals next to something like a Maserati or an Alfa Romeo the Jaguars and Land Rover, Range Rover products are probably one of the best bang for buck for a person looking for a used vehicle. Now how I bought mine I bought it under an extended warranty I've got a CPO warranty it was a original owner and the car looked and checked out perfectly. So I had full confidence that I could buy this car, enjoy it for a few years with the extended warranty, and then make some decisions down the road. I've truly been loving it ever since. I've always personally looked at the F-Type as one of those cars I test drove it the first time. I was absolutely blown away by it. I loved it from every angle. And truly after driving it back to back with a 911 of the same generation, Porsche 911 Carrera S, I decided for similar money for brand new, I decided to go with the F-Type used one because brand new, I'm not sure I felt the value was totally there brand new at $135,000 Canadian is where my car listed brand new. I wasn't sure I was ready to throw that kind of money down on a Jaguar on a riskier proposition. And I think that's where a lot of customers get to. And unfortunately, because of a lot of customers get there and elect to go elsewhere, maybe they look at the F-Type and they're absolutely blown away by it like I was, but then they're like 130 grand for the R, or maybe I'll go buy a 911. My value's locked up there, it's more secure. Or they buy a Corvette, it's hot, it's, it's popular, it's gonna sell if I need to resell it. There's a lot of great options out there. So the Jaguar is in some really tough company. We also have Mercedes-Benz and the AMG GT cars, and those are also spectacular choices, as well as the Lexus LC500. They all represent great cars in that long hooded, you know, grand touring type space, but yet the Jaguar F-Type stole my heart. Now, unfortunately, what that means though is because a lot of people don't have the faith, faith in buying one of these brand new, 
it's started to take a toll. It's chipped away at the bottom line of Tata Motors and the Jaguar brand as a whole. As great as the brand is, and as an amazing used car value that it represents, people aren't buying them used. Very few. People certainly aren't buying them new. I've seen the same brand new 2023 model year sitting on the local dealership floor, actually sitting outside the car lot. It's blue and it's been sitting there for probably a year and a half or more and it just sits and sits and sits. There, nobody's buying it. Now it's a poorly specced unit, has the painted roof on it. It looks like more of a dress down model. They spec it lightly, but it's still a beautiful car and it's an opportunity to get one of the best sports cars around at any point. It's an extension of the old E-Type from many years ago, which was arguably one of the most attractive and most beautifully sculpted vehicles known to mankind. But none of that matters, because if you're like a lot of people, everybody loves a Lamborghini. Sure, they're beautiful to look at, they're beautiful to go ride in, but not everybody wants to actually commit and own one. And that's very much like an F-Type. Everybody loves them from a distance, you get thumbs up, but not everybody wants to buy one. And that hurts Jaguar. Now, Jaguar committed to go into full electric by 25, and so here we are, 2025 knocking on the door and now Jaguar's in a world of hurt. Let me read a little email that I found on Twitter or X if you will by a gentleman named Chris Henry. Shout out. So here's an email that Chris received from the local Jaguar dealership upon putting a deposit looking to seek a purchase for a brand new Jaguar. He wanted to get knowing of course the internal combustion engines were on the way out. He wanted to capture and get an opportunity to get one of the last and the greatest. Of course here's this note directly from a Jaguar dealer. I've got news for you that I'm sure will disappoint, so my apologies. The reason Jaguar did not convert your order is because they are shutting down production of all models by June. I'm sure you had heard that their plan was to go ultra luxury with an all new, all electric lineup for 2025, which currently is now postponed until 2026. New reports suggest that JLR is working towards splitting the brands and it appears that their parent company Tata Motors is in the process of spinning Jaguar off to sell it as a separate business unit. My guess is they'll find a Chinese backer looking to enter the premium market with some brand recognition. Their plan is for low production, low volume production in the future that doesn't fully support the existing dealer network. They have been actively pursuing dealers to turn back their Jaguar franchises as they will only be producing around 9,000 vehicles annually. They've gone from 187 dealers in 2022 to 141 dealers annually currently and are further looking at scaling down to 90 in total. With 90 dealers and 9,000 cars annually to sell, that's only about 100 cars per dealer per year or about 8.25 units per Per month. It's simply not a sustainable business model. And since we are a standalone Jaguar dealer and not necessarily a Jaguar Land Rover dealership combo, they're leaving us no choice but to turn back the franchise, which we will do on March 29th, ceasing Jaguar operations. I don't know what to say, everybody. So clearly the writing's on the wall. They've been deferring electrification, pushing that out. The I Pace is the only thing hanging around. The F Type you can't buy anymore. The F-Pace, I believe what they're doing is now cleaning and cleansing outstanding inventory. The Land Rover Range Rover group is pushing really hard and promotion it and promoting a lot of their product line for different reasons. To liquidate, separate their business models, and of course, it too may be in a world of hurt. But currently, the way it stands, Jaguar might be one of those brands with virtually no future. Now, does this worry me? I personally own a Jaguar F-Type R. This can go one of two ways the way I see this. One, they dissolve the company altogether. Then my car becomes obsolete. It sits in the garage and I can't get parts for it in five years. Because we all know that there's always going to be a backlog of parts for a finite amount of time. There will be a specific time frame that you're still good. Or the vehicle just becomes a little bit of a late bloomer and gets the later recognition that it actually always deserved and the value skyrockets at some level when people finally realize this was such an amazing car and we can no longer get our hands on one. There's been many cars that have gone that way of the Dodo Bird that you can no longer get and all of a sudden value skyrocketed. 
Am I even able to sell my car? With news like this that's hitting the radar, am I even able to put my car on the market today and have even a hope or a dream or a prayer that somebody's gonna buy the car? As this news starts hitting the airwaves, it's gonna be much more difficult to sell your used Jaguar. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear your comments section down below. Does that inspire you to hustle out there and buy that last F-Type? Or does it inspire you to pitch what you've got if you currently are a Jaguar owner, whether it's an F-Pace, E-Pace, F-Type, or any of the other models that currently exist in the lineup? Are you in a place where you're just going to pitch the car and cut your losses? With all of that said, you definitely want to check that out. The best car deals you can get right now if you decided Jaguar is not your cup of tea and you want to get yourself a good deal. Hope to see each and every one of you in the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.